August 3rd, an agreement was reached. The union won not only several skilled trades demands, but also exclusive bargaining rights at over 40 plants. It's no exaggeration to say that the skilled trades saved the union in 1939. Time we won half pay for Saturday work after 40 hours, double time for Sundays and six holidays, two hours call-in pay, wage adjustments for tool and die makers and maintenance trades, and they also agreed to conduct further negotiations on apprenticeships and seniority. At the 1940 convention, <coughs> the leadership went on record in favor of apprenticeship. A national five-member committee was established as a resource to inter any international rep or local union, union or bargaining committee. The letter from the International Secretary, George Addis, dated March 26, 1941, to all locals, urging them to include the model apprenticeship clause into all future contracts. So only four years after the birth of the union, apprenticeships are one of the major policies of the UAW. The UAW contract with GM, dated June 3, 1941, had a seven-paragraph section on apprentices and included a statement the standard apprenticeship plan as revised, dated November 1940, is to be followed. The first Skilled Trades Council meeting in Canada was held in Oshawa on March 9, 1944. The attendees called themselves the Oshawa and District Tool, Dye, and Maintenance Council. This council would later become the Oshawa Area Skilled Trades Council, still in existence today. The Canadian arm of the UAW at this time was known as Region 7, and on February 3, 1945, a meeting was held in Windsor to call for the formation of a Canadian Regional Skilled Trades Council in Region 7. On February 16, 1945, a letter was sent out from Canadian Regional Director George Burke informing all local unions that the new Skilled Trades Council had been formed and inviting delegates to the first meeting. The first meeting was held in Brantford on March 17, 1945. International reps George Campbell, Jack Tanner, and R. Stacy were present along with delegates from local 195 and 200 in Windsor, 199 St. Catharines, 222 Oshawa, 112 and 439 Toronto, 450 in Brantford, and 641 Ottawa. Jack Steffen of local 200 was elected chairperson, and Ed Goulds of local 222. As secretary. Some of the business included, uh, included the following motions. The letter sent George Burke asking that when future contracts are drawn up, a skilled trades clause be included, and that all international reps be notified. That membership in council be confined to apprenticeable trades, to form a committee to study wages and hours in various shops covered by the UAW. The first Canadian Skilled Trades Convention was held in St. Catharines on June 9, 1945. The minutes of this meeting included the following motions. That the national standards of apprenticeship be adopted as a standard for apprenticeship contracts and agreements in the future. <coughs> that an apprenticeship committee of four be set up for Canadian Region 7 and that George Burke contact the Honorable Char Charles Daly, Minister of Labor for Ontario, and request that the Apprenticeship Act be changed to suit the National Apprenticeship Agreement as recommended by the International Skilled Trade Branch of the UAW. So as you can see at that time, in the 1940s, apprenticeships were a major concern, as they are today. But even at the beginning, when they were first started, the main concerns, one of the main concerns, Apprentices and keeping apprentices going in their trades, keeping the trades alive, and ensuring that proper training was provided to the youth of our communities. Skilled trades workers in the UAW received autonomy at the 1946 UAW Convention when Resolution Number 35 was adopted and recognized the Skilled Trades Program. This granted the Skilled Trades representation by skilled trades. 